If for some reason you're not yet sick of my voice in these videos, I now have a podcast. That's it, that's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda, you're watching Small Entertainment, and today we were talking about how I started a podcast months ago. Months ago. I started my podcast back in July of this year, and I had been meaning to do the podcast for a long time. I didn't really know what I wanted the podcast to be, but in July, I put out the first episode of Swell Shenanigans with my friend, Jordan, who is not terminally online and has been in numerous episodes since then. I don't have a co-host, it's just myself. I went back and forth on whether or not I was gonna have a co-host when I did end up starting a podcast. At one point earlier this year, I was approached by a channel network multi-channel network to work with them with the podcast and like distribute it through them. It would have been great to be part of that network in that regards. It, I would have still maintained ownership of the podcast and of my channel and all of that. The only thing that it seemed like they weren't really sold on was I was against putting out the episodes on my main channel. I wanted a separate YouTube channel and they were like, yeah, we don't think that that works. We think that it should be on your YouTube channel. And I was like, no, because then it's gonna be, you know, drastically different formats. I knew I wanted a long form podcast podcast. And so that would kind of mess with my algorithm if I were to do it that way. And so that ended up being where we kind of like could not agree on. Uh, so I ended, they ended up passing on me and I was like, that's fine. So that was like early, God, I don't remember when that was. I don't remember when they reached out to me, but it was really early on in this year, probably at the start of the spring, maybe. One of the things that was kind of preventing me from starting the podcast as soon as I got out here to LA in January was I didn't have the time. And so that was one of the things that I knew that I kind of needed to push me towards finding an editor. William, if you would like to say hi, go for it. And so I knew that if I wanted to do a podcast, I needed to kind of figure out how to streamline my YouTube video process if I wanted time to do a podcast. We didn't fully know what the podcast was going to be. Still don't fully know what the podcast is. And we didn't really know like the formatting and all of that. I was still kind of figuring it out. I had been on a couple of different podcasts. Like I'd been invited on as guests, the Mike, Mike and Oscar podcast, who does movie reviews. Um, they joke that I am their unofficial third host because I come on so often. And so I've been on a bunch of different podcasts and seen how a bunch of different podcasts are done. And so I kind of figured out like, okay, this is kind of what I want to do for the recording of it and all, but we weren't sure about the editing process. So I wasn't really ready to do the podcast at the start of this year or even in spring of this year. And so to kind of appease my manager who was like, kind of like, come on, what are we doing? I think I've been patient with the podcast. When we're doing the podcast, he was being very encouraging, but I was also like, I have so much to do. To appease him, I was like, okay, let me do a test episode and see how that goes. Because I had been on a couple of different episodes of the podcast, Let's see, here it is, the test podcast. Yeah, so May 23rd is when I did this podcast and it was, gosh, how long is this video? 52 minutes long. And that one, we really were just kind of figuring things out. I now use Zencaster, which I'll talk about in a little bit uh, to record my podcast, but we had recorded the audio in a bunch of different ways. So the way that we did it this time was I knew that I wanted to do a video formatting because obviously, my main channel is a YouTube channel. You guys apparently like looking at my face. It was really kind of decided early on that like I have to do a video version of the podcast right out the gate. Like there was never gonna be like, oh, special edition. Like it was gonna be right out the gate. There was gonna be a video version of the podcast. And there is the Swell Shenanigans YouTube channel is up. It'll be linked down below, all of that. And so I knew that I wanted to do that. So I was like, okay, are we gonna do a stationary thing? What's this? So I set up my camera like this one and just recorded myself because Lissa was not here. We were doing it separately. And we tried recording it, I think over Discord, but then I had her record her audio on her end. And then I lined everything up later. So I recorded audio here and audio from her and I kind of spliced it all together. That was a nightmare, I hated doing that. It was a problem. Though I kind of figured out, like I kind of liked covering a bunch of different topics, starting with one thing, moving into another. I, the formatting was just not working out. So what ended up happening was the first episode of Swell Shenanigans and I had done a test episode of Zencaster with my dad later on. That never got posted so I don't have the exact date. What I like about it is that it records the audio stream separately but it records it locally. So rather than it all recording on like my end, it records it locally. So say I and Jordan, for example, we both have our mics, we both have our earbuds in, we are talking through a video call or an audio call, you can do audio only too, saves it locally. And then it sends it my way. I get the audio and the video quality without the guest having to do anything, without sacrificing any of the quality that would be gotten from just recording on their end. So yes, it's a webcam 
And, you know, I've had a lot of different versions of people using different setups. Like I had Roberta Blake come on. We talked about creator uh, economy shenanigans and things like that. And uh, his setup is insane. So like his video is so crisp, it's funny. <laughs> and then mine is just like my max webcam. But I, I liked that a lot, mainly because I like that the guest doesn't have to do anything. All they have to do is have some space on their laptop and that's really it. And Zencaster is not without its issues. I don't like that there's no way for me to remove the watermark. So if you watch the videos on the YouTube channel, you'll see that it says Zencaster in the corner. And that's because I use Zencaster to produce the episodes, which cuts down a lot of the editing time. Basically, it kind of compiles all of the audio and all of the videos together. And then what, I should be transparent about this. William helps me with editing on the podcast. It's much more limited editing, but obviously it's going through the podcast and all of that. And he gives me a video version and an audio version of the podcast. And I pay him for that. The podcasts are very much in the red. I have currently at this time, though the podcast has made money, I have not made money on the podcast. I am very much in the negative for the podcast. And that's fine because I really do like doing it. It's kind of like my expensive hobby and I don't pay for premium. I do not pay for premium, but they've also made that clear to me that like that wouldn't get rid of the watermark, which it's like, then what's the point of me paying for premium? You know, you can have up to 10 guests, like including yourself, I believe. I've only ever had one guest at a time, but eventually I would like to really play around with like more guests and see how that could play out. I don't know how we would do that, but it'd be interesting to see like what kind of we could kind of come up with with multiple guests at a time. And there have been in instances where like, for example, this mainly happens with me. My video cuts out at a certain point and like my video stops working where it freezes. It happened when I I did my episode with Phoenix Diva and we were talking about Real Housewives shenanigans um, and I did a doodle and I put myself there instead of me going like in the, the spot. So far there hasn't been a whole lot of technical difficulties with Zencaster uh, more than anything. It's kind of been like on my part for not conveying certain things to my guests, which we'll get to that in a second. Other thing that I like about Zencaster is I think in total, I have only paid like $20 the six, seven months I've been using Zencaster. And the reason for that is that basically all I am paying for at this point is the post-production time, which I'm basically paying them to produce the podcast for me and then make it easier on William for editing. But you can download all the files separately for free. You don't have to pay for any of it. So it's pretty great, frankly, not sponsored. But if Zencaster wants to sponsor me, you should sponsor me. But yeah, no, um, it's all free, which I like a lot. And then the post-production time just makes things easier on everyone and speeds things up. So it's great. But so one of the issues that we had was mainly with my guest, AJ, when we were talking about the John's Bones situation. She had an older version of a Mac and there wasn't a whole lot of space on it. And so that kind of caused a significant lag. And then also it caused an issue in the file transfer and the downloading the files on her end. And so what ended up happening was she was very patient, which was very nice. Um, I was like, I'm so sorry, can we hop back on the call and try to re-upload it because I don't want it to corrupt your audio files. If it corrupts my side of things, if it corrupts like my video, but then the audio is fine, that's fine. Audio is the priority with the podcast in my regard. And so as long as we both have the audio versions, fine. Great. If there's ever an issue with the guest's video, we can get a headshot or something figured out so that we're not just looking at like a blank screen. But what ended up happening is we ended up hopping on the call again, trying to upload it, and she ended up having to download it and upload it separately to Drive and then share it with me. So if anything, that proved to me that I needed to have some type of like guest page made and ready to go to send a guest, which I still need to do. I'm terrible at my job, um, but I really wanna have like a like a best practices for before your episode. I got that from the Scam Wow podcast. It's kind of like, hey, here's what you need to have audio wise. Here's what you should have this way. And it's just kind of like options and like almost like a little welcome packet to the podcast, which clearly I need to have because I think that it just makes things easier. And obviously because everything is online for the video calls and everything, uh, there is some issues with dropping off calls. I did an episode with and like the start, like our videos and audios were not connecting properly, but again, she's in New Zealand. So that was that whole thing. It's interesting to see the, the different challenges and obviously it's still, also a learning experience, but I've had a lot of fun working with a lot of different guests, some of whom are people I know very well and some people I barely know and we're just mutuals on Twitter or I cold messaged them or whatever, like that's what happened with AJ. And so that's been very fun and figuring things out. And then for distributing of the podcast, I distribute through Anchor. Anchor is the podcast platform distribution site by Spotify. Basically distribute to everywhere podcasts can be listened to. So currently Swall Shenanigans is distributed to seven different platforms. And what I like about Anchor is it's all together in one place. So I don't have to go and like find every other thing and distribute it all separately. It aggregates all of my stats, or at least 
I think so, through that, because it distributes everything, so I'm assuming it gets all the stats. So like in total, the podcast has gotten 20,000 plays, which I mean, hey, for a small podcast that a bunch of you kind of don't know that I have because I'm terrible at self-promotion, I think that's been pretty good so far over 21 episodes. You know, I just put out the last episode uh, the other day. I have about 719 unique listeners in the last seven days, which I think is pretty good. And my current balance is zero dollars and zero cents. The thing about Anchor is everyone always talks about how it's the easiest way to make a podcast and you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. That is true. They have dashboard episodes and money on the podcast. In total, what I've earned from Anchor or on Anchor is $52.30. I got a podcast sponsorship from Anchor and it was just a 30 second ad talking about Anchor and reading their copy and all of that. It was fine. I had no problem doing that. I use Anchor obviously, so it's, an anchor ad, not a big deal. And it had like a $15 CPM. I was like, oh, holy shit. Like that's a great CPM. The way that sponsorships work through anchor versus like I can get outside sponsorships, no problem. I just haven't done that for this podcast yet, nor have I attempted to. The way that they work is that basically you can put a sponsored segment anywhere in your episode. I usually just put one at the start and you cannot put it at the very end, but you can put them at the start. Then whenever you do get a sponsorship, every time you have one of those in your previous episodes, it just goes and adds it all in there. So you don't really have to do anything monetizing wise. So I usually just put in one sponsored segment at like the start of every episode. And even though I don't currently have a sponsorship active right now, that's still there. So that if there is ever one that pops up, it just goes right on in there and it works great. And that way I kind of like that because then it kind of shuffles through. But so for example, that anchor sponsorship that I did, that popped up in there for a little bit. And I think it was a 30 day sponsorship. It didn't tell me. That's the thing. I want these to be better transparency wise because if I had known that it was like a 30 day sponsorship, I probably, I don't wanna say I would have promoted the podcast any differently, but I may have tried to do like a bonus episode or something like that, just to see how much I could have gotten from the 30 days, but $52 in 30 days for a podcast, about four episodes of a podcast. I think that's pretty good. Plus one ad per episode, because at the time it was only at one ad per episode. So yeah, that's pretty good, I think. And that's just connected to a Stripe account. So that went out through Stripe. And then now currently I don't have any active sponsorships through the podcast. So there's zero dollars that the podcast has made in this time of 21 episodes. And I should point out why I thought 21 episodes was important, huh? I read a statistic somewhere that said most podcasts don't make it past three episodes and even fewer make it past 20 episodes and the vast majority do not make it past that. So I was like, okay, cool, I'll get to 21 episodes <laughs> and that'll be proof that I can stick this out. So that's what I did. That's why I waited till I had done 21 episodes to do this video because I was like, I'm sticking with the podcast. This is proof. And I should point out, what's a swell shenanigan, Amanda? Well, a swell shenanigan, it's really whatever I say it is. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> if you listen to the podcast, I straight up say in every opening, hi, I'm Amanda, but you can call me Swell here on the Swell Shenanigans podcast. We're still figuring out what this is, but I know I like talking about all things pop culture, social media, and shenanigans. What are shenanigans? Shenanigans are literally anything. Tomfoolery, jokes you did, a scheme you did, a scam you did, something dumb you did. Um, at the end of every episode with a guest, I have them share a shenanigan of theirs. It's been a variety of different shenanigans that we've gotten. I've gotten a lot of bird related stories, which I thought were interesting. We did have a, a guest come on, another Amanda, and uh, she talked about how the birds aren't real movement because she's very involved in the Canadian side of things, which I thought was fun. Lots of fun little stories like that and other little shenanigans. Some are very cute, some are very sweet. Um, um, others are just like, what are you doing? <laughs> and then we started doing listener episodes of Swell Shenanigans. So if you ever want the chance to be featured on Swell Shenanigans in a listener episode, Anchor has this really great feature where you can actually send in a voicemail of sorts, a voice message, and I play those out or add those in. Then we can talk about your shenanigan, or you can send an email to the Swell Shenanigans podcast at gmail.com, and I can read it out and weigh in on your shenanigans. And those are usually just short little solo Swell episodes, but those are kind of fun for me because it, I feel like everyone, it, it kind of makes it more real, I guess. Cause like numbers on a screen are great and they're one thing, but like hearing people and like actually getting little stories of people being like, I love the podcast here's my shenanigan, like I, it's really fun. And uh, we've had a couple of date shenanigans. We've had a couple of, we had someone send in a shenanigan of how he almost died off a mountain. Some uh, service industry shenanigans, uh, an appendicitis shenanigan on the same day as uh, Zac Efron had appendicitis, very fun. It, it's been a lot of fun little shenanigans like that. And I just really like that. So like I said, $52-ish from the podcast, 
audio alone. And then for the YouTube channel, the YouTube channel is officially monetized. Yay, it only took me 21 episodes. <laughs> but hey, that's way faster than my other YouTube channel got monetized. In order to be monetized on YouTube, you need 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. We are at $23.20 for the podcast YouTube channel. Ka-cha! <laughs> at this time, I'm kind of just letting YouTube place the ads themselves for that podcast channel. And if you've heard me talk about this on this channel before, um, YouTube loves to place ads. They love it. They, it's their favorite pastime. I won't be surprised if I have to go in and take some out. It's all a learning experience. But overall, I really like doing the podcast. Um, I really wanna do more. If there's any guests that you guys really think would like to come on and talk about shenanigans, and it doesn't have to be a shenanigan, per se, like that they're really involved in or anything like that. It could be, be something that they're very well versed on. Like I had to Phoenix Diva, we talked about Real Housewife shenanigans because I always hear talking on Twitter about it. Jake Onse, um, he's done a lot of different stuff, but on Twitter, he's very involved in the Free Britney movement that I've seen. So I asked him to come on and we did a full two episode deep dive on the entirety of Free Britney before she was free. And really what I would like this podcast to be moving forward and what I would really like it to be is kind of like an extent of this channel where I take something from the internet that either I don't know a whole lot about or I would like to know more about and then bringing on someone who is really well versed in that topic and then asking them questions and explaining it to me and to kind of talking through it with them and then in that same regard, kind of widening the scope of who knows about it. So I really liked my episode I did with AJ about the bone trade and about John's bones and all the issues with that. I liked the episode we did for Free Brittany. I did an episode with Isaac uh, from the You're Not Friends zine and all of that. And we talked about current PR relationships and stuff, but also the uh, Sophia situation of Sophia allegedly scamming a bunch of influencers out of money because I had questions about it. And I was like, some of this isn't adding up to me. Like, do you just want to come on and we can talk about it? And they came on and we just talked about everything it was great. Like little things like that, where we kind of just like how, like a good open dialogue I would like it to be, but about internet things that we're all taking too seriously. Does that make sense? Not that they're not all serious and all of that, but you know, a various degrees of seriousness. Let's go with that. Does it fall under the category of shenanigan? Sure, yes, because I say it does. And this is my show and I get to do what I want on it. In the new year, I really like to line up a bunch of people for the start of the new year. I have a couple of different people in mind for a couple of various episodes that I'm gonna be reaching out to now, but I don't wanna like, do it too close to the holidays because I know everyone kind of takes breaks at different times. Something that I would like to do eventually is bring on various influencers and content creators and have them kind of go through their own shenanigans, like the things that they have done. I think that would be really fun. Like, have you become a meme? What's the craziest thing you've done for a video? What's this? Like, I think that would be kind of fun because a lot of content creators are very shenanigan prone. And I think that that would be a fun thing to do. So the podcast is very new, very fledgling, but I'm excited to see where it's going. And I think that's going to be it. Reminder, I have a podcast. <laughs> Everything will be linked down below for the podcast and the email and all of that. That'll be all linked down below. Have you started a podcast? Have you listened to the Swell Shenanigans podcast? Uh, did you not even know that I had a podcast? I don't blame you. I'm terrible at promoting it. Let me know. Comment down below. I have merch like this mug back here. It's super cool. I don't have Swell Shenanigans merch right now. Maybe that's something in 2022 I can play around with and see if that's something that you guys would be even interested in. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd also like to support me on Patreon, let me listen down below. At this time, there is no overlap between the podcast and the Patreon, just so you're aware. And if you'd like to follow me on my social media, that'll be all up here. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day. Follow me on the podcast and episodes every Wednesday. Goodbye. I started the podcast because a lot of you would comment that like you like to just kind of play my videos in the background as a podcast anyway. And so I was like, yeah, it's kind of dumb if I don't also have a podcast at this point. Huh. Thank you, Alan, Brayden, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, Destiny, Devin, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Evan, Feckless, Hopeless, Hollow, Jucker, Ray, Joe, John, M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lex, Lisa, Luis, Matt, Matt, O, Matthew, West, Me, Mold, Red, Michael, Mike, Jay, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Brock, Rob, Robert, Ross, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Stefan, Tosh, Timmy, Tom, Wendy, Williams, Zendry.